Hello and welcome back to another best of the year video. We're really getting through these, aren't we, to talk about what is the best of each category in the field of network attached storage. And I hope help you guys decide on the right data storage solution for you. I know it's boring and I know it's trite, but this is a very dull niche subject and it always helps to have someone holding your hand. And that's what I hope these videos do. Today's subject is going to be six bay NAS, something that a long time ago I wouldn't have even made a best of because six bays were for a niche subject, super niche. Six bays are something that have grown in popularity in line with the majority of NAS solutions arriving with supporting SATA hard drives, which are getting bigger and bigger. In fact, right now, at the time of recording, you can get from Seagate Ironwolf 18 TB drives with 20 TB drives around the corner. That's an enormous amount of storage. Ergo, you no longer have to consider huge RAID arrays to get huge amounts of storage. Now you can get away with four and six and eight bay devices. And in the middle of that, the six bay is the one that we want to talk about. The reason being because of RAID 6, the ability to have two disks of redundancy. Now, for those that aren't aware, RAID or redundant array of independent disks or inexpensive disks if you're super old like me, what that means is the ability to have a large amount of storage all combined together in a lovely big pool of storage to play with, but also have the ability to withstand a certain amount of disk failure. That's known as redundancy. It is the ability for one of those drives, if they die, that you still have all your data safe. A two disk redundant system, as it implies, means you've got two disks of failure. And because these disks are getting so large, that's a lot of data you can potentially lose. And even if you do use fewer and fewer disks, two safety nets is always going to be better than one. And that's why RAID 6 is popular. And because of the way the drives have grown and the way the chassis have grown and the power behind them, six bay NASs over the last two, three years have become very, very popular. All the brands are getting in on it and there are a lot more to choose from than there's ever been before. So today I want to talk about the very best six bay NASs to buy right now. And I'm going to tell you my top three. I've gone through all of the six bays that have been available for about the last four years. And by the way, there have been a lot. And I'm talking to you, QNAP. You've really been banging them out. But over, overall, these are the three for me, which for their own reasons are the best six bays out there. We'll go into more detail as we go through it. But it's worth highlighting straight away that there are, of course, parameters. You can't just qualify because you've got six bays because some are better than others. First and foremost, any solution I talk about today has to have been released before October 31st, 2020. I'm not going to talk about any NAS that's not released, and I'm not going to talk about any NAS that is borderline vaporware. I'm only going to talk about ones that are, they may have been released in the last few years, that's fine, but they must have been available for sale and be physically around up to that date. Next, every single NAS in this list has to have at least two years of manufacturer's warranty. In fact, in most cases, it will always be higher than three years. The majority of six bay NASs will retail somewhere between 600 to 1,000 or more pounds. So I wanna know that I'm getting at least two, three years of warranty out of that brand. I wanna know it's gonna last that long, even if I hammer it every day. Next, I wanna know that any six bay that was gonna be included in this list and considered before we got to the top three had to at least support every single flagship software and application and tool that the brand is purporting. If it doesn't support them all, it's not included because I think at six bays, you are allowed to accept and acknowledge that if they say it can do it, it should do it. I don't want to see any six bay that says to me, oh, we run all of these applications and then you get it and then it goes, sorry, I can't. Also, I'm only looking at desktop app, uh, devices because although there are no, to my knowledge, six bay rack mount devices, I still consider rack mounts too heavy and enterprising to their own thing to be another tier of niche into this already fantastically niche area. And finally, I'm only considering NASs that have got 64-bit x86 architecture processors. I'm not looking at any ARMs, 32-bit or 40 or 64-bit as far as I'm concerned, largely because I think those eight CPUs, although incredibly efficient in terms of long-term power consumption and ability in most cases, their lack of GPU support and simplified instructions sometimes lead to a number of apps not running as good as they can or at all. So I'm not including anything unless it's got an AMD or Intel x86 64-bit processor. So 
before I tell you my top three six bays straight away off the bat, let's talk about the one that didn't quite make it. The one that got quite close to the finish, that just missed it by the mark that gets the participation trophy. Well, for me, that is going to be the TVS 672 XT. Now, this is a weird one because the reason it didn't make the cut is nothing to do with the fact that it's not capable. In fact, the TVS 672 XT is technically as good as at least two of the Nazis in the top three. So why on earth did I not include this 13 or 1400 pound Naz six bay? Simply because it's with the range that it's in, the 672 XT is only a few hundred pounds cheaper than the eight bay equivalent. That eight bay that I talk about on the channel a lot, the 872 XT, this, the Naz that's at a few hundred quid more is a six core i5 it's just a bigger better beefier nas and if you were considering the 672 xt in the first place you need to look at that 8 bay and that's the only reason it didn't make this list i am talking about users that will only buy a 6 bay and in that world the 672 arrives with a fanfare but still stinks of compromise compared to the 872 xt maybe you disagree let me know in the comments but Let's talk about my first pick. It's from Synology. It is the DS1621 Plus. Released in early October 2020. Very close to the finishing line, but it is available. The DS1621 Plus is a great six bay from Synology and it kickstarts a new family and series of devices that feature that Ryzen SoC processor, the V1500B. Now, it's a quad-core 2.2 gigahertz processor that, although it's not graphically embedded, has AES-NI encryption, has a fantastic floating point, and supports DDR4 memory. 4 gig by default, going all the way up to 32. This 6 base system uh, has NVMe SSD caching bays inside to assist uh, the internal performance and improve things, leveraging the high IOPS and read-write of those SSDs against the larger, slower hard drive, six bays all SATA, but it also arrives with four 1GBE LAN ports, which would have been nice to see bigger, but also has uh, expandability up to a total of 16 bays uh, with the inclusive DX517s and uh, PCIe Gen 3 times 8 upgrade slot. So you can add dual port 10 GBE cards or even 20 GBE cards or 25 GBE too. There's even with that PCIe uh, PCIe Gen 3 times 8 delivering around 8,000 megabytes per second throughput between the card and the main controller board. It means that you could add dual port 40 GBE cards in this system, although you will struggle to saturate that in a six bay. Now, in terms of software, you have got the entire gamut of software applications in the collaboration suite of chat, mail, calendar, drive, and more. Uh, just a whole range of applications from them. Synology Office 2. On top of that, you've got Surveillance Station, Synology Virtual Machine Manager, Active Backup Suite, Synology Moments, Photo Station, Video Station, Music Station. It's all in there. And as Synology uh, solutions uh, go, arriving at 850 quid for this six bay NAS, there's a huge amount of features and functionality and pretty much anything you want to do in terms of software, first and third party, this has go, got it going on with upgradability down the line and three years of warranty. It is the best six bay they've done for a very long time in that bracket, which will make sense later. And on top of that, it is a huge jump over that of the Intel Atom that was in the previous generation, which was, let's face it, really showing its age a little bit. So, what's my second place? Well, we're going back to QNAP for this one in the TS653D. This 6-bay Intel Celeron-powered 6-bay arriving at about 630 nickers, so a clear 220 less than the Synology 6-bay I just mentioned. The 653D part of the 53D series is a great middle ground. Not only with its quad core Celeron uh, 2.0 to 2.7 gigahertz per core in that four bay Intel Celeron J4125 processor, it also arrives with embedded graphics and four gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to eight gig. This system with its six bays also has 2.5 GBE, so up to five gigabit Ethernet on the rear compared with the four 1Gs. 
This device also has HDMI out at 60 frames per second 4K with a great KVM setup when you need it. And finally, it has PCI upgradability as well. So although it doesn't have the NVMe SSD caching base, it gives you the ability to add the upgrade cards you want to add 10 GBE, to add uh, into NVMe cache inside or using those for raw storage. Although it is worth highlighting, that the TS653D has a PCIe Gen 2x2 slot which allows 1000 megs rather than the 8000 promised by that Synology which means a 10G card you're going to be fine but the combo cards might be a bit of a problem trying to make the most out of both of those. So the 653D has the gamut of QNAP applications inside from um, QMAGI AI photo recognition to Hybrid Backup Sync 3, the best multi-tier backup program I've used on NAS so far. Virtualization Station allows you to run not only more kinds of VM image than any other VM provider on NAS, but it also has a VM marketplace to download VMs directly to your system without the need of the original VM, which is great for bench testing Windows 7, 8, uh, 7, 8 and 10 VMs at the click of a button. There's even Ubuntu Linux VM installation and container application VM uh, installation as well. HD Station allows a huge degree of support of um, HDMI out applications for home or for pleasure and with a huge growing array of applications for cloud synchronization and cloud migration in virtual JBOD, in hybrid mount, in box safe. There is just so many things the QNAP device can do that no other brand can right now that that's why even at this price tag of 630, it's a hugely capable six bay and definitely earns its place in my top three sixes. So what is my last six bay? Well, despite QNAP's large array of six bay solutions out there, I've got to swing back round to Synology on this, which is a real surprise for most of us, myself included, when we looked at the sheer number of NASs to browse through. But the Synology DS1621XS Plus for me, and again, this is where we come back to the bracketing system, is a great 6 bay. It doesn't invalidate the 1621. I think they both sit next to each other beautifully well, arriving at double the price of the 1621 and seemingly doubling everything about it along the way. This device arrives with an Intel Xeon-based processor, a quad-core older-gen Xeon, but still very, very capable. This processor also arrives with support of DDR4 memory, with the system arriving with 8 gig of ECC DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 32 gig. This system also has M2 NVMe cache slots inside, just like the 1621 does, but that Xeon and that memory will get more out of it in terms of background internal performance with the added benefits of this system arriving with 10 gigabit Ethernet with an onboard 10G slot readily available along with a couple of 1Gs that you can largely ignore. That 10G slot with a 1000 megabits per second external output by default is hugely desirable but even further improved by the idea that not only does it have all of this so far, it still has that PCIe upgrade slot, Gen 3 times 8, that 8000 megabytes per second PCIe connection for the system to add 10, 25 and 40 GBE network interface upgrade cards, NICs even, means that this is a hugely evolved system that even arrived with five years of manufacturer's warranty. It doesn't support Synology Hybrid RAID like the 1621, which is a real bummer for some of us, but it has the same upgradability, more memory, a better CPU, fast Ethernet connectivity, and ultimately will get so much more out of the DSM-7 applications that it is impossible to ignore what an impressive device it is, and that's why it's on my list. Again, these are my favorite three six bays right now in 2022 buy. If you're watching this video in May, maybe June 2021, things may have changed somewhat, and I recommend you go through some of my videos to find what other new six bays have arrived. But right now, at the time of recording, these are the three I recommend. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you have enjoyed the video, and click subscribe to learn more. In the description, there's a link to the full breakdown and selection process for these NASs as well as how they compare against others and their own hardware reviews. So I, check, I recommend you check those out. But otherwise, I will see you next time.